Welcome to Heartland Dual Sport. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on on the Show and Tell Monday series. Last week, we showed you how to build your own wheelcock, and today we're going to go ahead and go a step further and show you how we get the pieces laid out to strap down our bike. We're also going to be showing you a couple of pieces that you may not have ever thought about using to help secure the load of your motorcycle to keep it from falling over. So let's get to the video. Again guys, as we start this video, I'm going to show you the strap that broke. This was, the, like I say, the strap's getting old. I check my straps pretty regular and I always keep them indoors. I don't leave them out in the rain. Now, I'm not counting the time where I'm in the rain driving somewhere or something like that, but I store them in, indoors. Typically your straps last longer, but for whatever reason it failed. And sometimes you're just going to have a mechanical failure and that's what happened. So speaking of mechanical, here's something I'm going to show you that We've got rigged up in both trailers now, so when we get ready to tie down the bike, what I'm going to show you in the background is I'm going to be going ahead and loading the bike up onto the trailer. I'll be showing you the two pieces that you may or may not have used in the past, but it is something that I think, and it, it is something that I've used, and I find it to be helpful as far as trying to get your bike tied down, especially if you're doing the job by yourself. And that's going to be some 16-inch turnbuckles. You can buy them at Lowe's. And then you can also see that we've got one of the regular carabiner type screw together carabiners that you can put one on your foot peg and then one down in the eye bolt in the trailer that we've got already pre-drilled and set up in the trailer. So as we go to start loading the bike, here's where it's going to come in really handy. Number one, the wooden wheel cock that we built that we showed you how to build last Monday. When you get the bike rolled up in there, it will actually hold your bike. So as long as your trailer isn't on a decline, to where your bike would roll backwards and even it then you may be able to put it in gear but you can actually let go of the bike once it's in the wheel stand it will hold your bike vertically now again this is temporary time but it gives you time to get the turnbuckles connected to your foot pegs once you get those even loosely tight your bike's not going anywhere so now you can get out of the trailer get out of your pickup or whatever you need to do and start working on the tie downs. If you'll notice these straps I've got, I left on here on purpose because when I go to roll the bike up in the trailer, these straps are already attached. That just makes my life a little bit easier. So what I do when I get ready to load my bike, I go out there and I use the two turnbuckles, get them connected to the eye bolts in the trailer before I ever roll the bike up. And then I've also got my straps at the front of the trailer that are already laid out where all you got to do is bend over and pick them up and then run them through your strap extensions and it just makes life so much quicker and so much easier and again when I went and picked this bike up I knew that I was getting it I was kind of in a hurry I rushed myself and I didn't have anything really set up other than a couple of old motorcycle straps in my Jeep I was just excited to go get the bike and this is what it cost me so if I can help you guys save some money so that you don't have the same mistakes happen to you that happened to me that's what we really enjoy most about our channel so with that said we're basically done with this video I'm, I'm just showing you how I lay it out and next week's video what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the difference between like the homemade wheel cock that we did and loading it the same bike whether it be the KLR or the CRX <laughs> CR whether it be the KLR or, or the CRF 450, or it doesn't matter, whatever bike you have, I'm going to show you the difference between our homemade Wilcock and the one that we have mentioned in the first video that came from Harbor Freight. Some pros and cons to both. I actually like the wooden that one that we built better because, like I say, it will hold your bike so that you're, you've got your hands free to do whatever you need to do. Now, one thing that you're not going to see in the video when I lean over the bike, I'm actually on the this side of the bike the whole time when I'm initially putting the bike in the trailer. And when I my first turnbuckle that I'll go ahead and connect is going to be on the right hand side of the bike. And when you lean over the bike, you can actually use some of your own body weight to kind of push the suspension down just a little bit, help you get that turnbuckle connected on that side. And then when you're over here on this side, it's real easy because you can just push down on the handlebar and get it connected. And then like I say, if it's just loosely tight, it's not going anywhere. At this time, you can take your time, make sure all your straps are straight, make sure they're laid out the way that you want them, and you can get it tied down. 
I will put a link down below for the video or for these straps. They're called rocket straps. They say that they will hold a thousand pounds. It's a, I don't know if they will or not guys, but I will say this. The pack comes with four of them. There's three things that I like about these. Number one, you get four of them all together. Number two, they seem to be quality built. And then the third thing that I really like about them is they actually got the clips on the end of the hook. So it doesn't matter if you're clipping it on here, on your strap extensions, they're gonna go around your handlebars or your, sh or your front shocks, or if you're clipping it to the little clip on the side of your trailer, or if you're like me and you put eye bolts in your trailer, once it clips in there, the great thing about that is if for whatever reason down the road your straps do come loose, especially if you're going from here to Colorado or New Mexico, a long trip like that, I always check my straps at the gas station. Sometimes, occasionally, one of them will come loose. On a long trip like that, I'll utilize all four straps. I do the two straps up at the top and two straps down at the bottom, and that way it just gives you added security and plus the turnbuckles down at the bottom on your feet pegs nothing should really happen come short of you flipping your trailer so again guys those are three of the things that i really like about these straps i know there's some better ones out there and i'm hoping by the end of the month or the end of this series we can get a couple more straps in here that we can kind of show you in comparison and go more into detail and i'm needing to make an order with rocky mountain atv and hopefully we can get that made and get those here before the end of the month and or first of next month a lot of the reason that we're talking about tying down bikes right now is because that was one of our questions asked by our viewers they were asking about hauling the bike instead of moto camping so hauling your bike to camp is a lot of fun we've got several videos coming up soon and that's going to be on the thursday videos where we do actually take this bike up to colorado new mexico and ride it up there in the mountains so Again, guys, if you like our video, give us a big thumbs up. We appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. May you have a blessed week, and let's go ride.